Hello, folks. Good to see you again. Uh, intro, 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 whatever. Why do people have intros? What's the point of an intro? I don't understand. Uh, ticket King, lowest ticket prices, Wisconsin-based. If you're planning on getting some Packers tickets, we got family night coming up. I don't know if they... Maybe, maybe they don't sell tickets to that. Whatever. Go check out Ticket King and find out what they do sell tickets to, and you can go there. Um, I wanted to do a little bit of an update on David Bakhtiari. This may or may not be shocking to some people, but I have had questions on uh, the call-in line, by the way. Packers call-in number, 608 if you'd like to call in to the show. We do a uh, Packernet After Dark. I'm planning on doing some live streams here. I've just been... Uh, Kind of busy, partially trying to get more YouTube stuff going, but anyways, whatever. Um, questions about will David Bakhtiari potentially return to the Packers, you know, now that their offensive line seems to be in flux, et cetera, et cetera. There's an article written here by ESPN. David Bakhtiari says he wants to play in the NFL a couple more years. From that, a couple of other, I mean, this is the source if you want to uh, go look at it, but there's two main things here. That I wanted to look at. Here's an article by Kem Yol Bulan from Dairyland Express. Packers free agent cast doubt on return to Green Bay. They've got a couple quotes in here um, for your edification. According to ESPN's story, Bakhtiari is not interested in returning to Green Bay. If the Packers wanted me to protect Jordan, they wouldn't have fired me, said David Bakhtiari. Uh, a little bit further down, it says Bakhtiari wants to continue his career. He doesn't expect that to mean a reunion with Aaron Rodgers or Jordan Love, the past two quarterbacks he protected. So according to this article, which is according to David Bakhtiari, um, and, and it's it's not a guarantee, you know, obviously if the Packers realize that there's nothing good going on here, they may uh, come crawling back to Bakhtiari and may work something out. It's entirely possible. Um, I wanted to highlight this here, too. It says, ex-Packer David Bakhtiari wants to play with the next Super Bowl MVP. So this kind of, I mean, obviously we could assume that that could be uh, Jordan Love, possibly. But it kind of helps us to narrow down some of the options for David Bakhtiari. Obviously there's one um, that comes immediately to mind, but the quote here is, I want to play with the next Super Bowl MVP. Wherever the hell that's going to be, I better be with him. I just want to play with the next Super Bowl MVP. That's it. couple things in here. See if I can find them real quick. I should have noted them or something. Um, here. This uh, little segment here says, A lot of other people wanted, to just kinda, wanted me to just kind of grit through it, but no one experiences what you truly experience. Bakhtiari said of his decision to have a fifth surgery in November. A fifth surgery. Good Lord. He says, look, I've been gritting through it for three years. I'm in constant pain. I'm so happy now to be on the other side of it and get the actual surgery that I needed because my knee was not in a good place. My first thought on this situation is I don't know if David Bakhtiari has a job or a future in the NFL. Now, there are always teams that are going to be desperate, that are going to say, look, it's not great, but why not take a swing at him? But the problem with that is that David Bakhtiari is not coming back on some five-year contract. He's not going to come back for some BS, backup, nonsense money. If we read through this article, he talks in extensively. Uh, let's see. So this is more about, I just need to recover. I need to do all that, which is on the negative side of things. He says, I don't like other people writing my story. I couldn't just put a period, close the book, and leave it. He, uh, whatever. I just kind of got to remind people. People have kind of forgotten the kind of player I was, the kind of player I am. He goes on to talk about, I want to be a left tackle. I, I'm, um, he says, I want to be there in, uh, I want to be the, the cornerstone of an offensive line, not just in December, but hopefully in, in February and all that kind of stuff. So the vision he has for himself is he's going to get his knee right, and I'm going to be that cornerstone, top of market left tackle. That's what I'm going to be. So the question is, is there a gap between what teams value him at? Because everybody's got a price. I'm sure the, if, if David Bakhtiari said, look, I'll, I'll do it for the veteran minimum, the Packers would be like, well, okay, I guess you can come back. But that's not going to happen. And I think that's going to be the biggest hindrance for David Bakhtiari is the fact that his vision for himself is that of an elite top-tier left tackle. And I think his risk profile is just too much at this particular point in time. But I figure why not look at some potential here. 
Um, I don't know <clears throat> exactly. I picked out what I guess I would consider playoff teams. I added the Jets in there. You can argue with that if you want. I don't really care. You can argue with a lot of stuff. It ultimately doesn't matter. The first couple ones, the Buffalo Bills, Dallas Cowboys, Detroit Lions, Houston Texans, New York Jets, um, all have some merit to it. For example, Buffalo, certainly a playoff team. Dallas, you've got a playoff team and Mike McCarthy, which would be interesting. Detroit, because that's where former Packers love to go. They love to go to either the Vikings, the Bears, or the Lions just to screw with us. Houston, because they're obviously a young ascending team. And uh, the Jets with Aaron Rodgers. The problem is there's several. Um, some of these teams don't need a left tackle. The Jets do not. Houston does not. Detroit does not. Dallas does, and Buffalo does not. So Dallas would be the only one. The reason I highlighted these in the beginning is that these are all teams that use turf. It, t to my knowledge, I could be wrong. To my knowledge, these teams all use artificial turf, which David Bakhtiari is very, very, very against. Now, if, you know, the Jets or if Dallas or whoever came calling with that big money contract, let's say Dallas said, hey, I want you back, big dog. We need you to fill in this left tackle spot here. Um, would he maybe get over it? I don't know. But I would more or less rule most of these teams out. That leaves us with these five. These five are teams that I would consider um, not just playoff teams, but teams with a pretty legit shot. You could maybe say the Eagles are kind of iffy because of the way they ended. I still don't know what to make of the Eagles, but I'll put them on here anyways because it was a very fluky and weird situation. So if we go through these teams, Baltimore, I would say they don't need a left tackle. Miami does not need a left tackle. Um, Philadelphia does not need a left tackle. San Francisco does not need a left tackle. That leaves only one option, which hilariously enough, David Bakhtiari says, I want to... And, and here's the other thing. I don't know how much Bakhtiari actually... I mean, of course he cares. Of course he'd like to be there. I think he's angling for this team because this is the only team. This is the only playoff team that desperately needs a left tackle. Bakhtiari knows that this would be somebody he would love to play. He wants to be here. He gets to, you know block for Pat Mahomes. He probably gets a Super Bowl if he plays in the next, you know, if he can if he can get a, a, a three-year thing, if he gets his knee right, he, he, he feels like he knows he's going to get a Super Bowl, at least one. This is the one he wants. So when he goes on these media channels and he says, I want to block for the Super Bowl MVP, whoever that would happen to be, he's screaming at the Chiefs, just come get me. They need two tackles, desperately. This is a very good team with maybe the best quarterback in all of football. They have some good interior they need a lot of help. Now, maybe they did something in the draft. Wanya Morris is going into year two. Maybe they like him. I don't know. He didn't play very much. He was a third-round pick. I'm guessing that is not their first option. Jawan Taylor has been a disaster um, as a second-round pick. I don't even think they picked him. Did they Did they pick Jawan Taylor? Maybe. I don't know. Don't remember. This seems like a no-brainer if they can work out the price. So, uh, to me, it kind of comes down to one of two things. Um... Will a team be willing to pay what David Bakhtiari is wanting to make? Because sometimes that's the problem. A lot of times we'll look at players and go, how could he not get a contract? How could teams be so stupid? And a lot of times it's just because players are too adamant that they're better than they are. Or maybe not better than they are, but they're, they're worth more than they are. Because risk profile is part of the situation. Um, and then if he does get a contract, is it going to be Kansas City? Because I don't really see a whole lot of better options. I really don't. Unless we start going down the line a little bit. Start looking at teams that are maybe a little bit lesser. Right? Um, or just teams that are not necessarily playoff teams, but they're on grass. You know, does Arizona need help? Um, I don't think Chicago would pull the trigger on that. I know they've got a guy at left tackle. I don't know their situation there. Um, would Bakhtiari do it? I'm assuming. Um, Cleveland, Denver... Jacksonville, uh, Las Vegas, maybe get back with uh, Devonte again. I'm not saying they need left tackles. I don't know. Um, Pittsburgh, Tampa, Tennessee, Washington. To my knowledge, these are all teams that um, are playing on natural grass that he might be willing to consider. It's just a question of who'd be willing to pay him, and um, do they need or want a left tackle? You know, and, and I think the other nod for a team like the Chiefs, you know, if, if you're Washington, and that's not to say teams wouldn't do this. There are a lot of stupid teams that do a lot of stupid things. 
But if you're a young team <clears throat> that is a few years out from from winning, and, and you're thinking, you know, maybe we're more of a 2025, 2026 team once we kind of get our ducks in a row, you don't want to do this. So you're looking at teams that want to win today. That would be the Kansas City Chiefs. They're saying, I don't care if David Bakhtiari only plays for a year. We can use him for a year and then discard him and then figure it out from there. Maybe we draft a guy in 2025. Um, so this this is the one that makes the absolute most sense to me, is that if he plays, he ends up playing for the Kansas City Chiefs. That's my prediction. Actually, my prediction is he's not going to get a job, <laughs> honestly. Um, because he, even if you listen to the article, he's not even on the other side yet. He's talking about he's in constant pain every single day. Um, he, he's saying I'm on the other side of it, but he's still talking about rehabbing. He's talking about getting to a certain point where he can do this, that, or the other and assuring that I can do these things. This is not a guy saying I'm ready to rock and roll today. So the other issue is we've heard this before about he went through the surgery, he's ready, and then he wasn't ready. He never came back. And then he tried to play and his knee blew up and he needed more surgeries and more surgeries and more surgeries. And now we're hearing again, well, this time we got the surgery right. The fifth one was actually the right one. And this time it's going to be great. You know, at some point, it's just not worth it. It's really just not worth it. Not not for like actual starter money, not for starting left tackle money. It's not. So anyways, um, I'll leave it at that. You guys have a good rest of your day. Check out Ticket King. I'll talk to you later. Bye.